Today we look at American options versus European options. So what's the difference? So European style options, they can only be exercised at expiration. Okay, so at the last time period in our binomial tree. On the other hand, American style options, they can be exercised at any time prior to expiration. So on the binomial tree, they can be exercised at any other period. Okay, if it's optimal. Um, here are the three formulas we're going to need for today's exercise. So like always, we have the formula for the probability. We have the formula for the option, the current option price when it's a one step binomial tree. And then we have the formula for a two step binomial tree. Okay. So the exercise reads a stock price is currently $50. Over each of the next two one-year periods, it's expected to go up by 20% or down by 20%. The risk-free interest rate is 5% per year with continuous compounding. And so what's the value of a two-year European put option with a strike price of $52? What if the option were American instead? Okay, so let's firstly treat this as a European put option, okay? So we start with the current price of the stock, which is $50. Okay. Then we start the binomial tree. So it's going to go up and down. Now, in order to know these top prices, we need to find out U and D. So remember, we said U is the magnitude of the knob jump. So by how much is the rise? In this case, it says it's expected to go up by 20%. So in order to find out U, we do 1 plus 20% in decimal places, which is not, not 0 0.2, which is equal to 1.2. In order to find out D, the magnitude of the down jump, so by how much it goes down, we do 1 minus the percentage, which again, down by 20%. So 1 minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.8. So $50 times 1.2 gives us 60. And $50 times 0 0.8 gives us 40. Okay. So that's a one year, one period. Now, because this is a two year European put option, we have to go one more time. So up and down once more. Again, in order to find out this, we do 60 times U. So 60 times 1.2 gives us 72. Notice here the lines meet. So this means we can find out this stock price by either doing 60 times D when it goes down or 40 times U when it goes up. So 60 times D times 0 0.8 gives us 48. And finally, 40 times D gives us 32. Excellent. So now we have all the stock prices. Remember, what we have to do is write down the option, what the option values stand for below the stock prices. So in this case, it's going to be FUU because we've gone up twice. Here we do FUD or FDU, you choose, okay? Because it's gone up and down or down and up. And finally, FDD. The current value of the put option is going to be here below 50, denoted by F. And then we have FU and FD. Okay. So remember, this is a European put option. So it can only be exercised at expiration. So at the last time period, which in this case would be here. Okay. So remember, a put option is when the investor makes money when the strike price um, is higher than the stock price, okay? So when the strike price is higher than the stock price. In this case, the strike price is lower than 72. So the investor would be losing money. He would be losing $20. Therefore, he wouldn't exercise the option. Remember, an option gives you the right, not the obligation to exercise it. So in this case, because the investor is losing money, he wouldn't exercise it. Therefore, the option is worthless. So zero. What about FUD? The, the stock price here is 48. 
and our strike price is 52. So as you can see, the investor is making money. More precisely, he's making 52 minus 48. Okay, the strike price minus the stock price, which is equal to $4, okay? And finally, when the stock price is 32, the investor is making $52, the strike price minus 32, which is 20. Excellent. So now we have all the option values at the last period, okay? So for the purpose of today's topic, which is understanding American against European, instead of using this formula, which is used to directly find the current price of the option, we're going to go step by step in order to see the values of FU and FD. Okay, so in order to find out FU, we're going to use the one step formula. Okay, same for FD. Now before doing that, we need to find out the probability. The probability uh, illustrates, so what's the probability of the share price rising to 60? Okay, so in order to do this, we need R. So I'll write this down here. So R is the risk free rate, which we said is 5%. And then T, which is uh, the time frames. So in this case, there are one year periods. So T is one. And then we have U and D. Okay, so let's plug in the values. So P is equal to E to the power of R which is in decimal places 0 0.05 times 1 minus d, which is 0 0.8 over 1.2 minus 0 0.8. If you plug this into the calculator, you will get that p is 0 0.6282, okay? And 1 minus p, so the probability of the stock price going down is equal to 0 0.3718, okay? So simply one minus P. So these are the two probabilities, which in this case would be here. So P is when it goes up. So P is 0 0.6282, and one minus P would be when it goes down. So 0 0.3718, okay? And so this can be applied to any other branch in the binomial tree. Excellent. Now let me get rid of this. So now we have everything we need to find out the option values at each node. So by the way, these are, denote, are denoted as nodes, okay? So for example, where 60 is and FU is, would be node B, okay? At the start would be node A, so A, B, C, etc. okay? So let's find out FU first. So FU would be equal to E to the power of minus RT times the probability of the stock price going up, which we said is 0 0.6282 times the option value at this point, which is 0, plus 1 minus p, which we said is 0 0.3718 times the option value when it's gone down, which in this case is 4. So anything times 0 is 0, so we can forget about this bit. And then we're left with fu is equal to e to the power of minus 0 0.05 times 1, open brackets, 0 0.3718 times 4. And if we plug this into the calculator, we'll get that FU is equal to 1.4147. So FU is 1.4147. Perfect. Now we can find FD by doing the same process and by using the same formula. Okay. So FD is going to be equal to E to the power of minus 0 0.05 times 1 
open brackets, remember we're here. So the probability of share price going up, she said is 0 0.6282 times the option value there, which is 4, plus 1 minus p, which is 0 0.3718 times the option value there, which is 20. And if we plug this into the calculator, we'll get that FD is equal to 9.4636. 9.4636. Excellent. And so now we have all the option values we need in order to find out the current put option value F. For this again, we use a one-step formula, same process. So e to the power of 0 0.05 times 1, open brackets, probability of stock price going up, times the option value there, which in this case is 1.4147 plus 1 minus p, which is 0 0.3718, times the option value there, which is 9. 0.4636 close brackets and if we plug this into the calculator we should get that the current option the current put option value is 4.1923 excellent so f is 4.1923 very good Okay, so this would be for a European put option, okay? So when we can only exercise the option at expiration, okay? This means that first, in order to find out the option, option values, we look at the last time period and we, uh, we look if it's optimal and then we go back, okay? Now, what if the option were American instead? Remember, for American options, you can exercise them, exercise them early, okay? So in this case, you wouldn't just look at this last time period. You can also look at the first time period, okay? So in this case, we're looking at the stock prices 60 and 40. And again, we do the same as we did before for this time period, and we look if it would be optimal. Okay, so bear with me. Again, the strike, the strike price is $52, okay? So remember, because this is a put option, the investor only makes money when the stock price is lower than the strike price. In this case, as you can see, the stock price is $60. So in this case, the investor would be losing money, okay? Therefore, he wouldn't exercise it early because otherwise the option value here would be worthless, okay? But as you can see, if he held it until expiration, it would be worth more. Okay, so here nothing happens. On the other hand, when the stock price has gone down to $40, you can see that it would be optimal. More precisely, the investor he would be making the strike price minus the stock price. So he would be making, he or she would be making 52 minus 40, so $12. If the investor exercised it early. Now, as you can see, $12 is higher than if the investor held it until expiration. If the investor held it in, until expiration, the option value here would be only worth 9.4636. However, if he exercised it early, it would be worth $12. Okay? So in this case, the investor would indeed exercise early given that it's an American option. So let me write down, let me write this down in a different color. Okay, so in this case, the American, and with an American put option, at FD, the value of the option would be 12, okay? So now the current value of the put option is going to be different, right? Because we just changed one of the option values. So now we need to calculate again what F would be worth. 
So the probabilities say, stay the same. Okay, the only thing that changes is this. Okay, so now we use the same formula. So f is equal to e to the power of minus 0 0.05 times 1, open brackets, probability of the stock price going up times 1.4147 plus 1 minus p, which is 0 0.3718 times 12 in this case. And if we plug this into the calculator, we should get that f is equal to 5.0894. So as you can see with an American option, the option value, the current option put option value would be higher, okay? Because early exercise would be optimal at FD. So in this case, F, so in blue for the American option, would be 5.0894, which is higher than for the European option. Okay, so summary for this is that what you can take away for the American, American option is that the option values change depending on whether it's optimal to exercise early. If it's optimal, the investor would exercise it. So you have to change the option value at the node and then you have to calculate the current option value again using the same formulas as before.